Hi everybody and welcome back to Extra Gaming Whenever where we are playing Super Mario RPG. This is part 9 on the road to Moleville. But before we get there, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you like what you're seeing in part 8, we covered Yoster Island. If you missed that part, go back and check it out. The playlist should be at the top. We appreciate your support of the channel. Now, how is this video going to work? I'm going to take you through the entire Moleville sequence from exploring the town, seeing the dilemma, going through the mines, talking a little bit about the enemies, battling the bosses, and that's right, bosses, to completing the mini games, and then the wrap up of Moleville and seeing what is new or has changed in the town and what we can do to better our characters. I'm not gonna take you through every battle. I'm not gonna take you through every level. But what I can do is give you tips and tricks as you watch the video. So it's super important that you stick with me during this video. That way you can sort of get the best strategy that I can give you while playing Super Mario RPG. So without further ado, let's tackle Moleville. Let's do it together. Let's rock and roll. So when we get to Moleville, of course, and the first thing I like to do is explore the town and uh, talk to all the citizens of the town so I can get an idea of what we need to do. Let's get a time check into our game right now. We are at approximately five hours and 51 minutes of game time. Now, let's go ahead and explore the town. The item shop is super awesome in Moleville. It's the first time where we can purchase armor and weapons for all of our characters. We're loading up on mid mushrooms right now, and we're gonna load up on maple syrups because we got a ton of coin and there's no reason to save it because we gotta spend it. Let's take a look at our punch glove, which is gonna give Mario a plus 20. The symbols for Mallow gonna give him a plus 30. And of course, the finger shot, which we got for free back in Rosetown. Did you pay for the finger shot? Don't do it. Go back to Rosetown and talk to Gaz. Now, we are uh, looking at some armor here. We got the mega shirt, the mega pants, the work pants, which any of our characters can wear, and of course, the mega cape. Lots of pluses and minuses to each of them. I just go with all the mega shirt, mega pants, mega cape. That way, my characters are ready for the battles ahead. Now that we're done in the item shop, we're going to continue our exploration of Moville, which will eventually get us to what we need to be doing in this town. We've talked to all the kids in Moleville, and now, wait a second, what's going on here? Ooh, a cutscene, an appearance by Bowser once again, but he, uh, he has lost some of his army. That's curious. So after that cutscene, we take a lap around Moville just one more time to make sure that we have spoken with each of the citizens before we tackle the mine.
So Mom Mole is freaking out because her kids are stuck in the mine and she is scared. She's trying her best to get to the new mine and it's just not happening. So we're gonna use our thinking caps here and I'm gonna jump on top of these two moles to get into the old mine so we can start our exploration and battles. And here we go into the old mine. Now we've got several enemies in the mine that we'll be dealing with, starting with enigmas and lava bubbles. These enigmas can be a little annoying because they have a bunch of special attacks that certainly wreak some havoc on our characters, especially the mute ability that disables our special attacks. The lava bubbles throw some hot shots at us that we can easily defend. And now that we have the symbols, Mallow is a little bit more powerful on that attack, which is really great. Although this battle is taking a little longer than normal, we're still going to be able to handle these enemies without a problem, as always. Next up, a couple new enemies to defeat. We've got Magmites and Clusters. These Clusters can wreak some damage on our people. We don't get to them first. They often self-destruct, which does some massive damage to our characters. So we wanna make sure that we take care of them as fast as possible. The Magmites are pretty good against physical attacks, so you want to get them with any special attack if you can. Uh, they are pretty resistant to lightning attacks, I'm pretty sure, so we just uh, gonna pound the pavement here and do the best we can. Another new enemy, the bomb -omb. We're gonna be seeing the bombs all over the place, and the bombs are going to be an important part of the boss battle later on. Again, we're just gonna attack them head on and uh, be able to take care of business here. So after we cleared this room, we're going to be speaking to this toad who is exploring the caves for various treasures. And later on, when we uh, defeat all the bosses and gain the star, we're gonna be able to talk to this toad again, who will have some special items for us to purchase. So stay tuned for that. And as we battle and battle and battle, our characters start to level up. Mario reaches level 13, Gino reaches level nine. And as we explore deeper into the mines, it starts our next quest. Now we explored all the rooms, we cleared out all the enemies. We didn't show that in the video because it's repetitive. It's a little grindy. There's no reason to go there. But what I can tell you is that we need to hit this spring in order to start the next part of this mine. Once we hit the spring, we're going to start a cutscene, and that cutscene includes Croco. Croco is back with his crooks, and he robs us of all of our items, and we gotta get them back. So the next thing we gotta do is we gotta explore the caves again, defeat all the enemies, and find the crooks in order to initiate or the croco battle so we've got a little bit of work to do here in the mines as we find all the crooks
So the crooks are pretty easy to spot. All you have to do is sort of explore the caverns and the caves like you sort of been. Uh, look behind some boxes. They're pretty easy to spot. But for whatever reason, Croco was eluding me during this entire uh, search for him. So I sort of am just doubling back uh, as best I can to find Croco. That way we can start the battle. So apparently Croco was on the move and we just had to wait for him to come to us and now we can finally battle him. So we're gonna hit him right off the bat with a little Geno Blast action and it's gonna hit him for 100 hit points there. We're going to use this super fireball on him next. Mario gonna hit him for 238 and that is a weakness. We're gonna hit him again with a special attack, the shocker for 81. Not great on Mallow, his special attacks are not fun as of right now. Croco hits into Mallow and takes all of our stuff. Not great, not exciting about that at all. We hit him with the finger shot for 94. He attacks Gino back for a big whopping zero. We get him with the fireball knowing that he is weak to fire 204. Gotta love it. Mallow, we're thinking about what we want to do. Just checking the items. There's nothing in that inventory. We don't have enough flower points for Shocker. So we're just going to go with this symbol. We're going to save our FP for Mario. But it doesn't really matter because we take care of business and Croco is defeated. We get 10 experience points and 50 coins for that win. And heck yeah, Mallow reaches level 13, which is awesome. So now that we got the micro bomb from Croco, we can bring it to this mall who will set the explosive off. That way we can continue on deeper into the mines so we can see who is really controlling the bomb bombs around here. So during this next part, it's just going to be another bunch of battles, which we will fast forward through. In the meantime, Gino reaches level 10 and we finally approach the person, the thing, the Punchinello that is causing all of these bomb bombs to be everywhere. This battle is super unique so I can't wait to break it down for you. So he's throwing bombs, we avoid it. Now, let's get started. Good day, the name's Punchinello, bomb maker extraordinaire. Punchinello, never heard of you. Mallow absolutely sassing him up right now. You will make me famous. He's sort of a random boss. He's not really part of like Smithy, but uh, he's certainly a formidable foe. So right off the bat, we hit him with the star. Riders triple move. Gotta love it. It's beautiful. Bang! Tag him for 414 HP right off the bat. He calls his bomb bomb squad, and we're going in right for the punch glove. 108 right on the dot. Thunderbolt special attack from Mallow, hitting them for 102. They're out of here. He immediately brings him back. So I know that's sort of a futile attempt at damaging him. Gino hits him 
We're 154 on the finger shot. We're going to hit him with the fireball. He's got to be weak to fire, right? He's a bomb maker for crying out loud. We hit him for 138, and that's really all she wrote for level one. Now he's got mezzo bombs out. We hit him with another thunderbolt that hits him for 65. Oh, he tries to attack Gino. No good there. Finger shot right back at you, 77. We're thinking about hitting him with another super fireball to see what that does. 107, but definitely his defense is a little better. Thunderbolt again to the Mezzo Bomb Bombs. We knock them out. He brings them right back, but he, they don't get a chance to explode, which is good. 132 on Punchinello. He is definitely fired up, so he's going to be bringing on one more stage of Bomb Bombs. And, uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen. We got some dialogue between our characters. Gino, take your best shot. Mario steps up. Now you're in for it. He brings down. Wait a second. Why isn't it working? He starts jumping and jumping and bang. Punchinello gets punched out by the giant bomb bomb. But this is not a good situation. We're thinking about what we have to do here. They should probably get out of here, but the bomb bomb ignites and it's gonna blow. So our heroes have to watch out. Boom, the bomb goes off, which dislodges our star. And somehow we all survive, but we've just got a little bit of black soot on us, but not to worry because the star is right here. And now that's gonna make us feel good about our lives as we grab that star and cue the cutscene. Three stars down, three to go, and one final one. Come on, we still have to find Dinah and Might. So normally when you get the star, sort of everything fixes itself, but not in this game. We are about to embark on one of the most fun mini games in this game, uh, and it's the minecart ride. So what we gotta do is we gotta try to stay on the track, but also go as fast as possible. Uh, we just do this one time. We get about two minutes and 39 seconds as the time. Maybe we'll do a high score video one day, uh, one day in the future, but we'll just show a brief clip of the minecart game and then we'll just sort of speed on through. That way we don't ruin any of the surprises for you, but we'll definitely do more of a breakdown of this video later on because it does take some skill to do the minecart game. Once you get done the inside, go to the outside, and now it sort of reminds me of the old school Donkey Kong Country games, uh, which is a side-scrolling adventure, which is a lot of fun. We've got to use a bunch of mushrooms to get up this hill. And that sort of ends the minecart game with this big jump and fireworks going off. Two minutes and 49 seconds, 68 milliseconds. And that brings us back down, down, down into Moleville as the minecart crashes through the roof of Mamol and Pamol. And there we have it.
With Mulville seemingly saved, we're going to go ahead and start to explore to see if anything has changed. But before we get there, we're met with a couple snifters, snifters? Uh, that are chasing a beetle, and it's sort of like a mini cutscene, but it also gives us a clue as to where we're supposed to go next. So, those, uh, those snifters are chasing that beetle. Someone likes beetles in this game, and we'll try to, to figure that out as we talk to all of our citizens. Now, Moleville does have like a mini shop game and basically you start off with purchasing fireworks and then you trade them for a shiny stone, you trade the shiny stone for cookies, you trade the cookies for the spot, and generally you get a frog coin, which is sort of a bad deal because uh, when you spend 500 coins for a frog coin, that's not a great ratio, but this is what I'm going to tell you. When you level up and you get to Monstro Town later down in the game and you're you're at level and you want to be at level 30 and you want to make sure you got good accessories and you want to battle the best boss in the game, you're going to want to come back to Moleville and collect that shiny stone because that shiny stone is going to be important for you in order to battle the best boss in the game. Couple things I want to mention in Moleville that have changed. Obviously, uh, all of our citizens are back into their houses, and one citizen in particular sells items, but not for coins. She wants you to give her items, they will give you points, then you use the points to purchase special items. These special items are great, uh, they give you a little combination of fire, ice, and uh, other things, but uh, you sort of want to bank these items which should help you in battle against bigger bosses that definitely have weaknesses that your uh, characters uh, sort of can't do just yet with special attacks, especially with like ice attacks and fire attacks if you run out of FP and all that good stuff. Remember that toad from the cave? Well, now he set up shop and he's got an item for you and you definitely want to buy it because it's called the Lucky Jewel. And when you keep the Lucky Jewel in your inventory, you will become lucky when you battle, which means that you have a better chance at uh, getting the double the experience points or double the coins game with the Yoshis. And that means that you can level up your characters just a little bit faster. So getting that Lucky Jewel, it is a steal for 100 coins. As usual, as we explore Moleville, you can do the minecart mini game. Of course, they're going to charge you 10 coins for it because it's now a tourist attraction. And there is also something else in Moleville that you should consider, and that is finding out the song. When I was playing through this the first time, I totally forgot that I had to go into the cave to get the song. But I sort of got tipped off about that there would be a song, so I think I used Tadpole Pond as a little bit of a cheat because I know one of the tadpoles sort of tells you what the tune is before you go to Todofsky in order to get the next card. But anyways, that's a video for another day and we'll come back to that. But when all is said and done and we are done with mobile at this time, we did go back into the mines just to grind a little bit and we got uh, Mario to level 14. We are officially at the six hour and 47 minute mark, which means we spent, you know, about an hour-ish or so in Moleville battling, beating Croco, beating Punchinello, and playing the mini minecart game, which is lovely. But that's it for this video. If you like the walkthrough, you like the tips, you like the tricks, you like the style, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate your support. 
We love making content for you. That way you can play the game to the best of your ability. Did I miss something? Or is there a tip or a trick that you have involving Moleville that I missed? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll see you in part 10 later on. We appreciate you watching part nine. And don't forget, watch the other parts if you missed something. And if you didn't miss something and you've been sticking along with me, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. We'll catch you on the next video. See ya.